they assemble at night, each one having prepared as diligently as possible to the time given to them before the witching hour, the hour of reckoning, the time when they begin outdoor cartoon television. Stray casts, it's on the air. Time for Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television live right here, right meow. The Bass and Madness continues. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. Another action-packed show tonight. Of course, it's Wednesday. What do we do? We bring you the best in the Bass and Galaxy every Wednesday night live here on StrayCast.net and the StrayCast Facebook page. Um, but first off, I would like to wish a very, Happy birthday to one of my heroes, one of my heroes in life, uh, one of my mentors, the guy that, in my opinion, revolutionized uh, fishing television shows and bass fishing tournaments on television. Uh, how about a warm studio audience round of applause and happy birthday wishes to Jerry McInnes today. <laughs> Woo! Happy birthday, Jerry. We love you. We love you, Jerry. Yes. The audience is loud tonight. That's my dude. That's my dude, Jerry McInnes. Hey, uh, uh, giant show. Um, we're pretty excited. We got two first timers. Pretty excited. Yeah, pretty, pretty well much excited uh, tonight for two first timers on the Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television Show. Coming up first at 710, it is Steve Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. He's the dude. He's the king of the jungle. They call him the Tiger Man. Steve Kennedy. Yeah, uh, and Fisherman. then another first timer uh, on the Stray Cast, uh, um, a, a youngster on the tour, uh, but uh, he, he's making some waves, man. He's making some waves. With he's that. been making waves. He's, he's been got a wave pool going. He, he does, man. It's a it's a uh, vortex that he's yes. in. Uh, Bradley Roy at seven forty. Bradley Roy, oh, be Roy. Bring your own Roy. Coming up. Hey, uh, this guy sitting. Uh, to my right here. He is the uh, youngest old man that I know. <laughs> he, it's, some people call him I Ebe appreciate that. Some man. people call him Ebenezer Whitaker. Uh, I don't call Nobody him that. Calls me that. I, I do not. Yeah, they do. You just don't know. They call it to you behind well, your back. Well, stop calling me that, people. Ebenezer Whitaker. Uh, but he's just plain old Ryan to me. Uh, he's still Ryan from the block. This right here is the popcorn Ryan Whitaker. He plays drums, too. He does. Bass fishes, and he plays drums. For having me on the show, guy. guy. Thank Any, you. Yeah, anytime, Ryan. You're, you're welcome. Uh, any Wednesday night, uh, just come on over. <laughs> it's a good time for all. I'll be here most Wednesdays. Bring your dancing yeah. shoes. Okay. Bring your dancing shoes. Um, our social media expert, and he will be fielding questions on the Facebook Live from you bass fishing freaks tonight. Um, you don't know it, but he is the Lord of the Dark Web. He's my buddy. <laughs> He's JP High, the hip hop fisherman. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, get it. He's not short though. Why do they always call you Shorty in that song? It's Shody. Oh, what's a Shody? 
I don't know. You say, uh, hold your tongue. I and believe say, it's a girl. Hold your tongue and say Shodi. Shodi. <laughs> she didn't even hold I held tongue. with my uh, <laughs> the, uh, hand. The producer extor- extraordinaire, um, he can only stay in the sun for a certain amount of time <laughs> before melting uh, and completely burning to smithereens like an albino stepchild. Um, he... <laughs> What, what is that? I don't even know what I just said. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Ellenberger, the Ginger Ninja. He's the producer of this show. He's my super glue. He's my super glue. That's the Ging Ninja. That's the Gingy Ninja. Um, hey, uh, Ryan, what's my shirt say? It says Monster Firefighters. It says Monster Firefighters. Yes. Do you know why I'm wearing a Monster Firefighter shirt today? Uh, I, I'm, Isn't I'm it assuming, apropos? Isn't it very apropos? I'm assuming that it's got something to do with the Monster Volunteer Firefighters having their annual fishing derby. Well, what a coinky dink. That's right. Yes. This Saturday, June 17th, mm-hmm. at Centennial Park, we will be there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be there doing some seminars, helping some kids fish. Starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, ends at noon. It's $10 per person, $20 per family. There it is. And all proceeds go to? They go to the, the volunteer firefighters. Volunteer firefighters. Two important Munster, things right there. Indiana. Um, proceeds going to the Munster volunteer firefighters. And I'm going to be honest with you. Most important to me is um, the deal with, uh, with kids fishing. Because we have all had that special person in our life who has introduced us to fishing. And this is an opportunity um, for, for parents, for, for, uh, for brothers, for cousins, uh, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, whatever you want to call it, friends of the family, um, to introduce your kids to fishing. Because think where us fishing freaks would be today if anybody didn't introduce us to fishing. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even if you don't know how to fish, that's why we're going to be there. We would be um, scrounging for Frosty coupons from Wendy's. Yeah. Or something like that. I don't if, yeah. yeah, if nobody I'd be waxing us. up curbs. Yeah. Still doing that. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's just part of life. It's smoking half cigarettes like JP and Ryan before the Halfs? show. Halfsies. Yeah. Paying a buck a square. That's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Hey, but uh, uh, Saturday at Centennial Park in Munster, if you are watching in the area, come on down. It's a good time for all. Bring your kids. Uh, we're going to catch some fish. Uh, Ryan is going to teach you the, um, the politics and ABCs of bass fishing at this, or uh, fishing in general. Uh, Mealy Worms. Pat's going to do that as well. And Mealy Worms. Hey, uh, Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television is about to start momentarily. Put the power poles down. Don't go anywhere, please. When we get back, it's Steve Kennedy. Yeah. Catch you in a minute. Quality, dependability, consistency, and fish catching performance is what separates a War Eagle spinnerbait from the pack. Hand assembled, inspected, and tested in Rogers, Arkansas, War Eagle lures are the choice of Mike McClellan, Andy Morgan, Edwin Evers, and you, the serious bass angler. War Eagle lures, when you absolutely have to catch fish. Find War Eagle lures at your local tackle store or visit WarEagleLures.com today. PH Custom Lures by Phil Hunt are quickly becoming the most sought after custom balsa baits in the industry. From the Little Hunter to the Squeaky Pea, these baits are pure quality, handcrafted, hand carved, and hand painted. But most importantly, they flat out catch fish. PH Custom Lures has a bait for any situation in a magnitude of colors. Check out the old school, straighter, and PH Custom series at phcustomlures.com. That's phcustomlures.com.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Pull the power poles up uh, because the time has come. I'm Pat Renwick. I'm your host right here. This is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Hey. And uh, we're super excited right now uh, to have on this Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television Bass Buzz segment, ladies and gentlemen, the king of the bass and jungle. They call him the Tiger Man. Give it up for Steve Kennedy. <laughs> Mr. Steve Kennedy. Yeah. Steve, give me an internet yep. high five. Internet high yep. five. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> it's right there. Do you, did you know that they call you the Tiger Man? I have not heard that one yet. I, ju I just made that up right now. Yeah, there you go. In fact, let me, <laughs> let me text Dave Mercer right now. I'm going to give him that one. <laughs> I'm going to give him. Man, yeah, Dave, I don't know. Yeah, they hadn't come up with one yet, yeah, so uh, I, kind of surprised. Dave, <laughs> I think they should just call you the fisherman. The tiger man. There you go. That, uh, does Dave Mercer do. Does Dave Mercer annoy you at all, or, or no? <laughs> we, uh, it seems like we're from different worlds. <laughs> I wouldn't say annoy. He's a pretty funny guy. Bad but, choice uh, <laughs> of words. Yeah. But, the, yeah, the Canadian versus the Southeast is, uh, he's a Yankee, it's for six, sure. It's six and five <laughs> half dozen of the other. There's no doubt about that, Steve. He's a real hoser. No no doubt about it, man. Hey, um, dude, we're excited to have you here on this show. Uh, I, I, pretty excited to be here. Well, are you kidding me, or is that a true story? I'm, I had done a Skype video in a long time. So, oh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're glad to have you. I'm not sure. You got to win to get on this kind of stuff. So. I, you know, I, no, really. Actually, that's, that's not true. Yeah. We, yeah, that's I told him, true. Okay. Two weeks before you won, I was bugging him. I'm yeah, like, he's get, like, get, get me Steve Kennedy. Get him Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. We have losers on here, too. Just so you know. Um, yeah. Name so. a couple losers <laughs> we've had on. I, we no, haven't had that many. Wait, let's not do actually. that. Let's not do that. Hey, um, <laughs> but but really, man, I'm I'm glad you're here, Steve. And uh, um, I mean, quite a career, man. Seriously, we've been. Um, I always say this uh, to guests, but not to be creepy. But we've been watching you for a long time, man. And um, you, for lack of a better term, are a unique angler. Okay. You are a unique angler. I think that might uh, fit you better than the Tiger Man. Let's just call you Steve I, the Unique. <laughs> I, I, I can see. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start sweating here. <laughs> to to us, going you're a couple a of different angler. ways. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but, dude, you, you're, you are, you're the definition of a stick. I mean, there, there's, there there's no doubt about it. So what I want. I um, appreciate that. Oh, dude, you're, you're awesome. What I want you to do is, um, is please give us um, a little Steve Kennedy history, because a lot of people know, you know, uh, Steve Kennedy as of late, and of course going back, let's say to maybe like 2007 or so. Um, 2007 for sure. Yeah, uh, but let's, you know, so the past 10 years, a lot of people know about you, Steve, for the last 10 years, but you've been at this like what, 15, 17 years or something? It's probably I'm pushing 15 now. Yeah, started in 2002, I think. So. Oh, okay. So yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I was I was fishing a long time before that. I mean, my dad's probably one of the best regional guys around. He's made the Georgia State team probably fifteen times or more. So I grew up. I mean, I grew up in a boat. There's no doubt about it. From the time <laughs> I was three years old, I was taking my naps in a rod locker. Yes, kind of I love I mean, that. My kid did that, that too. <laughs> dad was dad worked four days a week. Mom, you know, mom worked at the hospital. So she had to work a lot of weekends, nights, that kind of thing. So from the time we were little kids, we went fishing with dad. He, I mean, he literally, he was, he fished on the water probably 150 days a year, which wow. is, you know, as much as a lot of the pros probably spend on the water. Sure. So, uh, but yeah, we actually took our naps and rod lockers and, uh, you know, if it rained, we fought over who would get under the console as opposed to getting stuffed in a locker. Which, <laughs> Wasn't well, always an ideal situation, but uh, but no, I grew up fishing. Dad was probably one of the best ever. I mean, on a regional standpoint, he never did as a pro, and uh, you know, but you know, if he had, he'd probably be a Larry Nixon or a David Fritz. He would have won his share, I promise you. And uh, but yeah, he grew up fishing out deep. Uh, you know, structure fishing. He there's been a few articles written. Van is the man, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I mean. I, that's what I did growing up. And then I started fishing, uh, you know, I fished a few tournaments, local tournaments, not a big deal up through college, all that stuff. But after college, I started fishing the BFLs. I went as, you know, dad was fishing as a boater. So I go as a non boater. And, uh, you know, for several years there, I went as a non boater. I'd always make the regional, but never did exceptionally well. I, I won my first tournament out of the back of Matt Heron's boat. Really? 
and uh, sure, cool. 1996, I think it was. So I won at Lake Martin out of the back of his boat. Kicked his butt with a jig, by the way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, from there, somewhere around the 2000 time frame, they changed the format from a, you know, a, a pro co. To, they changed the format from a boat on boat draw to the pro co format that they have currently. And nine boaters came out of the woodwork, and I could not get in as a nine boater in the first event of the year. And the second of, I didn't even go down there. the The second of the event of the year was at Lake Eufaula, which was less than an hour from the house. And uh, I went down there, and they said we can get you in as a boater, but not a non boater. And uh, the only boat I owned in my name at the time was a little Bass Tracker, seventeen horse kind of deal. And, nice. Or seventeen foot boat with a forty horse. I'm with you. And I remember thinking when they said that, I think I can get the live wells working tonight. You know. <laughs> I, I had so. never. I mean, I never used them. I had no reason to use them in that boat. But uh, but anyway, I missed a check by a dead fish. Uh, Those live wells. On, I, had, I had points as a boater from that point forward. So. Uh, I ended up winning the super tournament at the end of the year in the Bama division. I won the first tournament of the year in the Bulldog division at Seminole. And then I won the super tournament at the end of the year at Neely Henry again. And then I won the super tournament the very next weekend at Lake Sinclair in Georgia. Damn, dude. So in a one-year period of time, you know, two seasons basically, but a one-year period of time, I won like $30,000. Yes. Fishing out of a bass tracker with a 40 horse. Somewhere nice. in there I upgraded to a 50 horse. I bought a new motor because I picked that one up pretty bad. <laughs> you went shopping, but, did you? But, but from that point horse. on, you know, I'm like, I told my wife, you know, if I can get in, you know, FLW, I couldn't, I couldn't even fish the, uh, they weren't opens back then. They were invitational. So, yeah, I yes. couldn't even fish bass opens or invitationals back then because I couldn't get in. So, uh yeah, I signed up for FLW. I went and bought a uh, a boat off the side of the road with no motor. I bought a Ranger for fifteen hundred bucks so I could enter as a Ranger boat owner and nice. uh, signed up for FLW somewhere. I think it was two thousand and two. So uh, anyway, somebody let me get in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the first year I fished out of that aluminum boat and uh, didn't do so hot. I requalified, but I wasn't a great year. A little bit in debt actually after that one but uh the second season i won at kentucky lake and uh you know from there i was pretty much committed <laughs> it, it, it kind of did it it kind of did it yeah, from there we're, uh, yeah i mean winning enough to keep going yeah so. and and you and you've you've kind of done this on your own uh without a lot of outside help for a long time and i don't mean i don't mean information i'm talking sponsors <laughs> but we'll get to that shortly but what shortly, I, what okay. i want you to know um is something about you that you might not even know. Do you, I'm going to give you some Steve Kennedy information that you might not even know about uh -oh. yourself. This is this is this is shocking. This is a revelation right here. Now, and I do this with okay. all you all you elite guys that come on on the show here. Now, JP High, our hip hop fisherman social media guy over here, he is going to tell you how many pounds of fish has Steve Kennedy caught in his career. Do you know the answer oh, to this, wow. Steve? I don't have a clue. Okay. No, I'm a numbers guy, but I ain't kept up with that All one. All right, now get ready. Get the thinking cap on. Now, go ahead, JP. How many pounds? You have caught 4,732 pounds. 4,732 pounds of bass in your 15-year-ish span. Okay. okay. That's what I've weighed in. I'm that's just with bass. Okay, that's what, yeah, that's what you've weighed in. That's exactly what you've weighed in. where does that put me relative to the crowd? That's a... oh, okay, now, now hold on. This is the good part. This is the good good I'm about to give you okay. right now. Okay. Now, you've won, um, like, in, do you know how much money you've won? You're a numbers guy. How much money have you I have, won? I mean, I'm over a million in both tours, so. Uh, yeah, I I'm mean. One point, I'm probably 2.5 pushing three, actually. Uh, you're exactly right. See, you know, you know, in both two, combining all your events, both tours, 2.5, okay? Way over 2.5. In BASS, you're at about 1.6 million, okay? And these pounds that we calculated are from BASS events. So breaking it down, Steve Kennedy, <laughs> each pound of bass that you have caught in a BASS sanctioned event has earned you three hundred and thirty-eight dollars a pound. Wow, that's not too <laughs> shabby. Better than selling them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's golden too. Better than selling them. Now, now that I mean that's sponsorship dollars right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, it don't get no better than that. 
That is that is pretty good. We, so, we are uh, sponsored by Green Bass. Yeah, that's I mean your, that's that, your sponsor. That is pretty <laughs> damn good, man. Pretty pretty damn good. Hey, um, let's uh, let's get to the Dardanelle deal. Um, okay. Congratulations. Gr- great, great, great to see you win, man. wasn't a It wasn't a great practice for sure. Now, I heard. I heard about it. Um, but you know what I thought was so cool, dude, and and this just does not happen that often that you had yourself a um a little uh a little miracle spot i mean it was a, it was your little hidden angel in the rough you know <laughs> there you go it was your little bass and angel just, it doesn't happen very often and none of the locals even knew it existed yeah, seems like i know I, there may that, have been a few but like the last but, time i can think of a spot like that and i know there's been more of them but i think of ike and ellie's spot in the classic he won 2003. The 2003 classic where he went into, what did he call it? The, the he called it the heart. The heart, where, where Ike found the heart. And, and you found, um, you found. I'm you, glad we weren't in Louisiana because there may have been a little more controversy about where I was fishing had we been there. But. Yeah, right. He might get shot at. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. As high as the water was, we were definitely up in territory that's not normally fish. So. <laughs> Dude, you found a gravel pit. How awesome is that? And you found a way to sneak in it. It wasn't hard. I mean, it was like four and a half feet deep. So <laughs> there were just a few willow trees going across the front. I mean, it wasn't obvious, but so you didn't honestly, have to. Hop. I don't think any of our guys even rode up that far. They're dum dums. They're big dum dums. They should have known better. <laughs> you and, just drove on through there. They're usually pretty good if I. They always those find holes. those spots. How, you guys always end up like you. You know, okay, they're eating a jerk bait. You all know they're eating a jerk bait, or they're they're all eating on the east end of the lake. You all know that it's like some kind of bass spider sense that you guys have. You know, but th- this it case is amazing how a lot of guys end up on the same stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Usually when I do well, I'm all by myself. I'm like wondering, where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's good or bad. Something's different. But, so uh, <laughs> you just snuck that bass cat right in there. You didn't even have to hop nothing. It was no, it was not hard at all. It was at least four and a half, five feet getting in there and plenty wide. You, honestly, you could have run in there on plane if you wanted to. But, uh, wow. but there were a few trees in the way. You wouldn't. Uh, anyway. So you you I'm did. I'm surprised nobody was in it. Our guys are great at finding those kind of places, but with the water as high as it was, none of the locals, you know, it just that comes into play once every 10, 15, 20 years, maybe. I don't know. It's uh, honestly, I don't know enough about the river to say that. <laughs> well, count your <laughs> blessings because it worked. It you, worked, and yeah. I mean, it wasn't like they were just laying there. I mean, tons and tons of fish for me to catch. I had to manage them every day. I didn't. Uh, I didn't go till 11 and 12 o'clock the first day, and I left at 11 o'clock two days in a row. So uh, I knew there weren't enough to keep me going. Had there been somebody else, it would have uh, certainly wasn't one in there. But uh, but yeah, there was. Uh, it wasn't like it was just laying there like logs, as many as you want to go catch. <laughs> I had to manage them, and I managed them as best I could. Now, how how but, uh, did you how but, did you end up finding the spot? Was it was it just an accident? Did you stumble across it, or did, were you thinking I, about it? I had a I had a decent first day of practice down there on the lower end. I was catching on a swim jig and that you know water willow type stuff, and then I found a place where I flipped up. I had about twenty bites flipping, and then the second day of practice, I stayed in that Illinois Bayou where everybody everybody them, goes. I had one keeper bite an entire day of practice. One, one, where's my camera there? One bite <laughs> all day and uh, was not happy about it. And then I went back running on the last day of practice. I went and checked some of those places because I was afraid somebody went through them. And the place where I had 20 bites only got three. So uh, at 11, 11.30 on the last day of practice, I decided to run all the way up to that lock. I'm just... You know, I just didn't feel like I could find anything else down there where everybody was fishing. So, uh, so I just wanted to go see. I knew it was flooding. You know, I kind of like to see flood conditions because it positions fish pretty well. But, uh, but yeah, I went running all the way up there. There was one creek on the left side of the river up there that was just full of bait, full of full of gar, full of everything. But I never had a bass bite in it. And then I turned around and I'm idling down. And um, I had one bite on one of those willows out there on the main river, which it was almost impossible to fish. It was so rough out there. But uh, but I did get a bite. So I kept kind of poking around, looking, looking. And I'm, I was idling, drifting down the river. And I could see that pond over a road or levee or whatever you want to call it. There were no trees. I mean, it was 
I could see the water. I mean, you know, it wasn't the land didn't stick up a foot and a half above, you know, above the level of the water. And then there's water over there on the other side. I mean, just obvious it could be, but, but it wasn't obvious how to get in there. I had to turn around and go back up current, which, you know, current's running six, eight miles an hour. So, uh, Jeez. basically got to get it back on plane to get back up there. But, uh, but anyway, it wasn't hard to get into once you got there. It, uh, we did it. So. <laughs> Yeah, and it worked out, dude. It worked right. Out. I mean, I didn't go, like I said, I didn't even go looking for that stuff till 1130 on the last day of practice. We had to be back for a meeting at 430. So, you know, I really only had about 15, 20 minutes in that pond in practice. So uh, I had five or six bites off one little point. One of them, I saw two that I pulled to the top that were, you know, two and a half pound keepers and but, you know, I didn't think it was all that great. I mean, I, I fished a fair amount of stuff in there, and then I hit that one little stretch that had a few. But, uh, but then, I, I didn't think it was good enough to go start on it. I mean, I started where I had the 20 bites in practice. Right. And, uh, That's what I was going to say. What made you decide? Did your area just go to crap that you d decided to I was. It was halfway decent. I had, uh, you know, the first day I had three in the box at 11, and I should have had a limit. I lost one. It was probably three and a half, four. I had a couple of decent bites, but, you know, 11 o'clock, I only had three fish in the boat, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, if I'm going to get up there and have enough time to fish around, I got to go now. So uh, so I probably left 11, 11.30, got up there a little afternoon, and I, I fished in a pretty good ways without a bite, but I got to that best little point, and uh, I flipped in there, and I lost one about three and a half. I lost another three and a half, which wasn't a good thing, and... Uh, and then I turned around, I pitched back in the exact same spot and got another bite and uh, got him in the boat. It was three something. And then I turned around and I pitched back over there, didn't get a bite. And I pitched over three or four feet over and I caught another one about two and a half. <laughs> and I mean, they're not three or four feet apart. I'm like, I, I actually turned to my marshal. I said, I may have enough to win here. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. So those are the right, you know, those quality. 15 pounds of the day kind of bites you yeah. get. I'm, no, I'm noticing kind of a trend here. You seem to be really good at shaking off, lo losing a fish. I, I mean, uh, historically. I mean, going back dude, to 2000, I, uh, back to 2007. 2.5 mil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I could catch my bites, I'd be awesome, dude. <laughs> I mean, thinking about that 2007 tournament at Clear Lake where you had to release like a nine release. pounder and a six that pounder. Was, I had a nine in the, in the mouth. box, so it was probably, I said nine at the time, but I actually had a nine in the box, so it was probably a true ten, probably the biggest bass I'd ever caught in my life, and, oh, I had to let it go. and you had to let it go. <laughs> I had and to let it won. go, so, and <laughs> if you watch the whole show, there's three or four guys kind of turn their back and unhook them, and oh boy, like, really? <laughs> Uh-oh, but not ski. <laughs> hey, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, back to Darnell. Now, and I noticed, man, you've been... You know the the whole shad spawn thing going on um, in the prior tournaments a little bit, obviously there at Dardanelle too, and and you've uh, a lot of guys are are you know throwing spinner baits in this in this uh, shad spawn, throwing jerk baits in the shad spawn. Of course, top one. I need to get on that jerk bait, by, by I, the way. I, I, me too. Um, but you're going. I noticed, man. I even re remember at the classic, you're throwing that. Um, that three quarter ounce white jig with just a good old ounce, zoom I, chunk on I, the back. I I didn't even know they had a three quarter ounce until like two <laughs> years ago. I'd always use I've always used it's a DNL advantage jig. I've always used their five eighths ounce and uh, and yeah, I, I couldn't find them. I didn't know anybody that sold them, whatever. So I had to call them up. You know, I need some of these things. I used to get them when we went up to Kentucky Lake all the time from. Uh, what was it? Backwaters Online, I think was the name of it. Okay. But, uh, but I used to get them up there. We used to jerk them out there on the ledges, that kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, when I was sitting there talking to them, they said they had a three-quarter ounce version. And I'm like, well, I need that because uh, <laughs> you know, my problem is I'm always – to get the bites the way I'm doing it, it's all about the fall. And right. so with the five-eighths, I had to use like 17 pounds. You know, maybe I could get away with 20 sometimes. But – but 15 or 17, they're actually out there jerking them on those ledges with like 10. That's so, crazy. Uh, but anyway, they, they told me they had that three quarters. And then I finished uh, third at Wheeler last year doing the exact same thing. Right. Shaft spawn. I mean, just incredible bite. and But able to use 25-pound test with it and actually land some of those big fish. And, uh, and then, you know, going to the Classic, I actually had some offers of some pretty decent help. And... Uh, 
I remember telling the guys, you know, if I'm going to catch them, I'm going to catch them on that white jig on a shad spawn. If nice. I'm going to do well, that's going to be my, my deal right there. And I almost pulled it off. And what, what? Finally, hopefully, I mean, yeah, finally here we got another opportunity where I actually caught them. But, uh, what are you doing I've special? Been what are you... I've what been doing? on the same bike for the last four events. That's just, all right. <laughs> you, don't, you don't necessarily catch them every day, though. That's the hard thing about it. They, uh, there's a day or two in there where the shed don't spawn. You get that post front or whatever happens. And, yeah. And you just you get bit or get bumped or whatever, but they don't eat. And so, yeah, sandwiched between a first and a second, I've got a 104th, which is probably the worst event I've ever had in my life. Ouch. But, but I was, I mean, practice was awesome. So, <laughs> so tell me again, this white chick, how, what are you doing with this thing? I mean, you're swimming it. How are you swimming I'm it? I'm swimming it. And, you know, the two events I've done well, I've had willows. So the Classic and, uh, you know, up here at Dardanelle both had willows out there. But I'm swimming it in the willows in the top. And the shad are, uh, I mean, the bass are up there looking for a shad spawn in the morning for sure. So it's, you know, the first hour or two is just absolutely awesome. Are you just reeling you're, it in? You're, you're, are, are you just you're swimming it along? You're swimming it up high, and oh. these fish are tracking it underneath. You're fishing it so fast that they're not, you know, coming up and eating it. But then when I drop it, you know, I kill it a little bit, and it falls. It falls right in their face, oh, and they yes. have to react. It's, it's a pure reaction bite. So uh, this is awesome. That's anyway, the new deal. It's almost like dropping it in a that. bucket. All you see is mouth come up. And, <laughs> It's like, Bait just falls right in. It's yeah. like dropping it in the gravel pit bucket. All right, there you go. That works too. How uh, how long do these shad spawns last? I mean, how how much time do you actually get to fish that when it's good in a day? Ah, I mean it's it's usually good. You know, the first two hours in the morning, but uh, but yeah, where I was up there, at Darnell. I mean, those fish hadn't seen a bait, so they stayed in the tops of those trees. I mean, pretty much all day long, but. But yeah, the key bite certainly isn't in that first two hours. I mean, wow. but, but yeah, we've our tournaments have just kind of followed that shed spawn here for That's the last three, right. four events. I mean, it's been a perfect, perfect setup. The I just like storm. I said, I blew it bad in a couple of them. But you got to dance. But with I'm doing brother. the same thing. I mean, it's hard to get away from for sure. So yeah, you had a, you had like basically three baits. If I, if I if I heard about this correctly, you, you had the jig, you had the you were flipping the little beavy. And, uh, yeah, and the frog. That's what I start out flipping down there in the grass, and then I ended up catching a few on it in the first day, especially up there. But uh, why the smallie beaver as opposed to the regular size? What was your decision? Uh, I, at the classic, I was kicking myself for not slowing down enough to catch a fifth fish on day two. So, uh, so yeah, I was just shooting for a limit. All I okay. was doing was trying to catch a limit at Darnell. I mean, it was my practice was so tough. All I wanted to do was catch five fish. I wouldn't have been upset if I had 20 pounds in two days. I was hoping that was enough to make a check. But, uh, <laughs> and you but did I it. had no, no confidence I could catch five fish any day there. So. Okay. You got here, the big check. You got the big check. Exactly. That's my question. <laughs> After so many years, what was the last win? 11. 2011. So yep. six yep. years in the making. You finally you put the fish in the basket. You see your weight. You are now announced the winner of the Lake Dardanelle event. Dude, what were what were you thinking? I mean, how were you feeling? It, it ha was it crazy or was it like, yep, yeah, here it is again? Or are we uh, just tell me what went on? I'm, I mean, I'm, anyway, it's been a long time since I've been in the winning circle, but uh, you know, after the classic finished in second, I mean, I just I wanted to win bad, so uh, so I've been working at it harder than I have in the past. You know, I have a reputation for not practicing as hard as a lot of guys, and uh, you know, I'm working at it and. You know, really excited to be there. For Dude, sure. yeah, really. I, I wanted you to win the classic too, really bad. I, I really appreciate <laughs> that. Anyway, it was, it was wanted, setting up. He, he, you know? he won it, man. He uh, he pulled an incredible bag off. I, mean, I was impressed. I was. I mean, it was awesome for me to beat the seven guys that were in front of me. But uh, but yeah, Jordan beat a what ten or twelve? I don't know what crazy. place he was even yeah. in. It was crazy. <laughs> hey, um, that is awesome. You uh. You you got a you got a, a new sponsor. Um, is it is it is it true that Bass Cat had to beg you to sponsor you? Is that a true story? The way you hear this, I hear it on the on the inner bass web. <laughs> no, there was no begging involved. They, be they begged you. They're like, Steve, please, please, we want to give you no, a boat. No, damn no, it! No, no. The foot pedal is way up in the front. And, uh, 
<laughs> Miss Carrie Short have gotten to be really good buddies over the years. I mean, they look after each other a lot. And uh, so, yeah, we've been hanging out with Kevin and Carrie. We've been awesome. north with them a bunch. And, uh, you know, I had, had, had had an opportunity going for a ride with uh, Kevin out there on the Great Lakes and what have you. But, uh, but yeah, well, I mean, we're everywhere they go, we end up going anyway. Nice. So, uh, it's a natural so it makes fit. It's pretty easy. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the greatest deal in the world, but uh, but it was fair. I mean, a lot better than most people have been offered. So. No, it's it's awesome. And, I'm you know, I'm being a wise guy saying about that. <laughs> I, I think it's phenomenal. Um, You know, but I kind of admired this about you throughout the years, that it seemed like you kind of had this freedom that a lot of bass fishermen, professional bass fishermen didn't have. Um, you you – you were kind of like a you were kind of like an outlaw in the basslands. You know what I'm <laughs> you saying? Know, you you say yeah. freedom. I I call it confidence. I, I mean, I always felt like you knew you were gonna catch them, and you're <laughs> like, I'm just gonna go catch bass to make money. Yeah. It, I, I mean, it wasn't necessarily by choice, guys. It really is. <laughs> but uh, there's but, a lot that went into it. I qualified for the elites the first year of the elites, and they came out with a no competing tournament trail logo. So at the time, I was sponsored by Pedigree through FLW, and they wouldn't let me keep the FLW logo on my boat and fish bass, which up until that point, everybody had done. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I tried to order a deck lid that didn't have FLW on it on my boat so I could <laughs> run it in the elites. And, uh, and FLW said no. I, I asked for Ranger, so somewhere Ranger called FLW and... So, yeah, they pulled my sponsorship, you know, a couple of weeks before we had to go fishing and uh, and ended up calling up Derek Yamamoto, got sponsored by Konami, which, sure. you know, wasn't a big deal, but, I mean, at least we got a boat wrapped and uh, all that stuff covered. So, uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, it's nice not having to deal with all that stuff. I mean, I think it's an advantage at times for sure. But uh, And especially if you're cashing but, checks and making $338 right, a pound. I mean, I, I qualified for the Leeds 06, you know, had an exceptional year 07. You were talking about it. But then 08, I mean, the economy tanked. So, I mean, it wasn't like there was a lot of offers. It was uh, right. it was survive, fish, or, or you're out. And <laughs> we've lost more and, than half our did. field. I mean, it's not just me. I'm just the one that. It's most obvious because of how well I've done. But, uh, but yeah, we've lost more than half our field in 10 years. So uh, Sure. It's, 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 uh, it's a dog-eat-dog, dog, man. There you go. It, but, bassin ain't but, easy. I've done what I had to do. I'm not necessarily proud of it. but You're, you're a survivor, dude. You're, you're a survivor. You and, uh, and you got, I love what I'm doing, it, and I'm going to keep doing it. it so. It's evident. It, I mean, it's, it's evident. And you have a very simplistic approach to fishing. And, and I really admire that. I mean, um, it's... I don't know about that. <laughs> I, no, come on. I'm serious, dude. I really do. I think people overcomplicate bass fishing so often. I think I see I it all the time. You haven't seen my tackle room, dude. I got more tackle <laughs> than anybody on tour. <laughs> <laughs> you got more than Aaron Martin's? I'm trying to clear it out, but, uh, <laughs> What's but the, I got it. How, What's, many, uh, how many of those swim baits you got in there? I got them, dude. <laughs> I spent ten grand on them before I left California. Oh so, uh, gosh, he's got. And, he's... Uh, I ain't no telling what I've spent since then. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to simplify it a little bit. I really am. I've got so much stuff I can't find anything when I need it. So yeah, I've been pulling stuff out, trying to give it away, whatever I can do with it. But, I mean, uh, you're still throwing Shimano Corrados from uh, 2004. There you go. But I mean, that's, that's all the new reels have got that gear that wraps around, that comes down below the, the reel. You know what I'm talking about? They sure. Got the bigger mm -hmm. gear that sticks down. And the way I hold the reel handle it, uh, or hold the rod, my fingers wrap around right where that gear is. And so I end up with my fingers like split. And uh, if you watch that tournament where I won out there at Clear Lake, I actually dropped the rod because I was setting the hook away from me this way. And, uh, it's, I mean, that was pretty embarrassing to me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. The rod actually slipped out of my hand because of that gear there. And, you know, Shimano did it first, but since then, everybody's copied it, trying to make a lower profile reel. But uh, but anyway, I've, I've been fishing with them for 10, 15 years. When, no, longer than that. I think they got the first ones in 96. Wow. So that's 20 years, and uh, never had to replace the gear in one. I, you know, I put some new bearings in them for sure. But, that's a uh, testimony. But yeah, just clean them every year, and you know, 
Try to avoid real. using them in salt water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, hey. I don't put a hurt on a few of them, but I, I know anyway, Ryan. They're just. I know Ryan wants to know the same thing, but tell me about the magic of that XPS swim bait. Tell me about it. Uh, it's just the guy that told me about it was that Fred Rubanus. He uh, he did real well at uh, Amistad on it. I think he finished third on it back when I first started, so somewhere in 06 time frame. But he didn't tell me about it until after they had quit making it. So uh, <laughs> he had already called. He had already called every store in the country oh, trying that's to buy Freddy. them. And uh, I ended up finding 300 of them. My dad found them in the bargain bin at uh, Bass Pro in Macon, Georgia. Nice. But uh, so yeah, I got 300 of them. I had one prior to that, but yeah, I got 300 of them for a buck ninety nine a piece. You, you can't uh, beat that. But, but, but the, the, the key to it is it just swims so much slower than all the others. It uh, If you try to reel it too fast, it rolls up on its side. Most guys don't like throwing it. but uh, And some of those old XPSs, they just suck, but, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like you got to get a good one. Some of them are so stiff. Yeah, they're unfishable and, you know, just <laughs> – anyway, but – I mean, it, it would be more guys throwing them if they could get them. I right. mean, have I you really seen the new? That. Have you seen the Babe? Have you seen the new the new version of it called the Babe by Fishing I have for not Five? Seen it? No, and I'm I'm not sure I'm gonna make iCast this year, so I'm a oh, little boy <laughs> it, concerned. I'm gonna miss out on something. But. These guys got it right, Steve. It, it's called the Babe. Really? It's made by Fishing for Five, and they have perfectly duplicated the correct xps swim bait features it's, it's hey, <laughs> oh dude you gotta see it it's the it's, i'm gonna have to check it out it's you called the babe it's called sure. the babe because it knocks it out of the park every time I've, uh, I've still got a few of them but yeah my best colors i mean they're i'm really down to one in the best color that still well, runs and uh, oh boy we know a we know a guy other colors that are okay but <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna but hook anyway, you up. I only get a couple of tournaments every year to throw it and uh, again it's on that shad spawn deal so yeah catch a limit on a white jig in the morning and then go throw that the rest of the day is uh i've won a few that way for sure <laughs> i know you have i read your file hey um you know, this is not only a bass fishing talk show, Steve. Uh oh. It's a, it's a it's a bass fishing game show, also. Okay. And uh, I know you're a big you're a big Auburn Tiger fan, aren't you? War Eagle. I got my head on. Boom. War Eagle. He's right there. War Eagle. He's right there. Uh, we're gonna play a little game, a little Jeopardy style game here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to name some famous <laughs> Auburn alumni. All uh -oh. right. Now, out of this group, I have four. Five, I have five people here. I need my wife here to help me. Yeah, with you this. can bring Where's... her in. Bring, bring her in. She's 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 in the yeah. She's not available. She's okay. in the house. I'm out in the camper. Okay, well, you're on your own. Well, this bed. is it. I, you got to put your thinking cap. <laughs> I want you hearing the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, here's the deal. I'm gonna give you five people. Two of these people are not Auburn alumni. I'm gonna okay. list them for you. You need to tell me who the Auburn alumni is, and you need to answer in question form. Isn't that how they do it on Jeopardy? Yeah, but I don't understand. I don't. Do you understand, Steve? I don't even understand. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm supposed to say which ones are. Yeah, tell us. Tell us. Know. Tell us who did really not is. go to Auburn. Yeah, I didn't think this over too well. But uh, anyway, here I'm gonna name you the names. Can I give me a little Jeopardy music? That's hey, I'm a numbers guy. Ah yes, the numbers guy, Steve Kennedy, is now playing a word game. Yeah. Welcome to Bass and Jeopardy. Here. Okay, here's the here's the uh, alumni. Which one of these is not an Auburn University alumni? <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson no sports. Lionel no, Richie. No, no. Lionel Richie. <laughs> Actor James Woods or Sandra Bullock, actress Sandra Bullock. Which one of these two are not Auburn alumni? Lionel Richie. Say, who is Lionel Richie and who is Sandra Bullock? <laughs> Ooh. You were... No? Oh, give me the buzzer. Steve screwed up. What uh, I meant. Yeah. <laughs> See, so I the one Buffett had been here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are not I like alumni. A huge Buffett fan. Not, huh? not alumni are. Sandra Bullock and James Woods. Bo Jackson, he's an alumni. Uh, Jimmy Obviously, Buffett, yeah. wasting away in Margaritaville. Flipped, stepped on his flip-flop, busted a pop-top. 
That's uh, Jimmy Buffett. He is a. Uh, <laughs> I knew Buffett was. And yeah. so is Lionel Richie. Hello. I did not know Lionel Richie. He I've is. never heard that one. Yeah, he's got awesome Jerry. It curls. is him you're looking for. Yeah. That, so. And Buffett, Buffett did not graduate, by the way. Oh, really? I heard they oh, kicked really? him out. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I wonder what for. <laughs> My wife's texting me. She's apparently watching in there. Yeah. yeah. Did she know? Did, did she know? She uh, she was the one telling me Buffett didn't graduate. What did she say? Yeah, Sandra Bullock. I didn't. Anyway, I did not know Lionel Richie. I yeah. did not have a clue on that L one. Lionel Richie. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Also, uh, uh, Cadillac Jackson. He's, he's an alumni. Yes, yes. We yeah. like Cadillac. Yeah, okay. I don't know about Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cadillac. Right there. I made that part, the last part up. But uh, yeah, big Bo Jackson fan. He was here. I oh. guess he graduated the year the year I started. So, uh, <laughs> right, I do remember him a few times. <laughs> I, I, you want to play another Bo game show? Fishing. Yeah. You want to play what? another game show? Who? You want to play another game show? I, not particularly. All right, well, then let's do it. He said it. He gave us the go-ahead. Let's do this, Steve. <laughs> Did I really? Yeah, you didn't even know. This one will be easier. This is easy. Oh, I'm sweating again. Yeah, this is a good one. You better get your really get your thinking cap on right now because oh. it's time for the uh, uh, Bassin <laughs> match game. Let's play the Bassin match game with Steve Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. It's time for the Bassin match game. With Elite Series superstar Steve Kennedy. He's sweating a little bit. I am sweating here. What you are we doing? tell me what comes to your mind and what matches up as it does with bass fishing when I give you these words here. All points in between. All points in between related to bass fishing. Ah, land between the lakes, Kentucky Lake. Land between the lakes, Kentucky Lake. I got you. Uh, the politics of bassin. The politics of bassin. I don't need to go there, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, okay. That's a good answer. No way, no how. Okay. <laughs> the sign of the times. The sign of the times. The sign of the times. I don't know. High school, college. High school, college fishing. Okay, I'm with you there. Bass fishing, no, no. Bass fishing, no, no. Ooh, turning down Toyota. Turning down Toyota. <laughs> uh, that is outstanding. Cent That's the ultimate. <laughs> uh, centrifugal fishing. Centrifugal fishing. Centri <laughs> Got nothing to do with bass fishing, but I think of throwing a cast net. For throw, throw, throwing a cast bed. I, I'm thinking, uh, cast net. I'm thinking keeping centered, keeping yourself centered out there uh, on the water. Uh, here, here's an easy one for you. Did you? Did I tell you they got a red snapper season? They got it. Uh, they got it extended through Labor Day, I think. I know so, you uh, like that saltwater fish. Federal waters. waters. That is a big deal, man. A absolutely, yeah. and those are delicious. Those red. Snappers. They had us cut down to three whole days in federal waters, and uh, apparently had to get all the states to agree to uh, not fish during the week. So yeah, we're gonna have weekends through sometime in September. And, uh, nice. Anyway. Did you ever hear the story about the band Led Zeppelin and Red Snapper in a hotel room? No. <laughs> okay, you don't want to know. Here's the last one. Real easy. Real easy for you here. My wife's over here texting me. What are we doing? <laughs> Real easy here. Grandma's... Headlights on a wrap. There you go. Gra <laughs> That's a no-no. <laughs> That's her pet peeve for sure. What, what was her pet peeve? The headlights on a boat ramp. The headlights on a boat ramp. Yep. Turn them off. <laughs> Grandma's squealers, old grandma squealers. What are those? Uh, those are little, uh, little channel cats, little white cats. So uh, you've been reading up on me. For I sure. read your file, man. They grandma sound delicious. Grandma passed away. Uh, I'm probably ten years ago now, but uh, but yeah, that was certainly my favorite food. We, uh, my grandparents used to keep uh, red worms. They had two of those old clawfoot tubs that everybody's redoing these days. They had two of them in the basement of our cabin that they kept red worms in, and. Uh, We'd go uh, fill up a couple of buckets of red worms, go out there and catch catfish, and uh, come back, clean them, eat them, same time. I mean, it's, uh, it was my favorite for sure. And Sounds they're, delicious. They're not like farm-raised catfish. They're, there's no fat on them. It's just it, it's anyway, a deal. What did she? What did, what did Grandma cook them with? What was the side? 
Ah, she fried them. Come on now. No, I know that. <laughs> I know they're fried. Come on. I'm talking like what? What she she make up some hush puppies with those or what? She, she... did the hush puppies. She did all that. Yeah. Oh the God, that sounds and, uh, good. Yes, but uh, buttermilk. You... She dipped them in buttermilk for sure. I don't know what else she did. Maybe sometime we can go she to Long John Silver. Tried to show Silver's. my wife at one point, and <laughs> it didn't go so high. <laughs> making me hungry can you can i miss we, them i miss them for sure <laughs> maybe we could go to long john silver's together after this <laughs> do you want to i do that from time to time i'm, I, uh, I'm with i try you. to eat that uh the salmon these days man i'm trying to stay away from the red meat trying to stay away from the fried fish all good that man. good stuff good <laughs> man healthy mind Real healthy salmon, body i'm in <laughs> heck yeah Hey, you're a Real lure maker. Snapper, I'm even better. <laughs> <laughs> He's dialed in. You're a lure maker, aren't you? I, I try sometimes, yes. <laughs> what do you do? What, what's the Steve Kennedy lure? I, uh, I got more into painting them more, you know, making my own skirts, that kind of thing. I, uh, you know, I made a few, I made a few crankbaits and all that. But the one thing I did probably more than anybody, I used to carry an airbrush with all the paints and everything and, uh, and would paint them on the spot. I, uh. The best the fish boat? I remember having was at Lake Murray. I ended up painting a bunch of those Sabils. I had a, a halfway decent first day, but yeah, I went back and painted some of those Sabils up that night that matched the bluebacks that I was seeing, and uh, ended up finishing second in the event. So, uh, but yeah, that's I do more painting than than actual making bait. So, what happened to that bait, the Sabil? It's like the magic it was, swimmer. It was so hot for the a while. It's like Hansel. Ah, uh, we just, we hadn't spent a lot of time on those blueback lakes in the right time frame, but we did go back and they weren't hitting it near as well. I mean, I think all baits go through that cycle. I mean, True. when you get a new one that's, you know, really good, the fish never seen it, uh, it'll Except win for everything gym. for a couple of years. And then, and then once they've seen it, they're seeing it more than they're seeing anything else. So, uh. So yeah, they'll start winning on something else. True uh, or false. That a rig would have gone the same way, but. We got that band, which not too happy about. Yeah. How come yeah. it doesn't happen with the jig? The yeah. jig always works. The jig always Everything works. Everything else goes through jig, cycles, I'm but the trying jig to works. fish a jig more. I, I mean, I'm known for throwing that swim bait, and it has burned me so many times. I've had some great finishes with it, but uh, but I'm trying to keep a jig in my hand this year. And uh, again, it works and it doesn't work sometimes either. So, uh, <laughs> Is this true or false? You were one of the first guys to really start fishing that chatter bait. I was definitely one of the first. I had a buddy up in North Georgia that uh, that told me about it. So I bought a ton of them. And, uh, you know, I probably had 25, 30 of them at least. And uh, I, I really didn't know what to do with it. And uh, we were down at Lake Okeechobee. You know, he told me about it that fall, I guess. So we get down there at Okeechobee and everybody's catching them on it. And I'm flipping. I think I was doing pretty well flipping, but... Uh, but yeah, I ended up giving them away, and uh, I bet you know half Whoops. the top ten guys were throwing my baits. I think, <laughs> and uh, I wasn't one of them there. But uh, but after that, I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't even buy them. That was what was so hard. Right. They, uh, There's another crazy. bass fishing no no for you. Don't give away your uh, don't chatter give bits. away all of them. But yeah, I, <laughs> I really I gave them away to anybody that was asking them. A lot of co anglers, a lot of pros got them. And uh, but yeah, then we went out to uh, Falcon, and I'm. Not bad. I went to Amistad, so I made top ten throwing it there for yeah, sure. Yeah, you caught a giant bag out there on them. I, I had a great yes. I had some great days with that thing, but yeah, I was I was one of the few guys that had them when they first came out, and then and then got kind of shut out. Most people don't realize it, but yeah, I kind of got shut out there for a while. I felt like, yeah, but the, I mean, I had a few left, but. They were hard to come by for the, a long time. The original chatterbaits. Now we pay twenty dollars a piece for the Japanese versions. I, is that what do I need to be throwing? Because the last batch I bought barely even wiggled. <laughs> no, well, you got to throw that new one. Anymore. I, I don't have any good ones. You got to throw that ch uh, chickity china, the Chinese chatter chicken. Jackhammer. The jackhammer. That's the, <laughs> the good one. That's the jack. Okay. That thing is magic, dude. I'm telling you. And you throw that Yamamoto Zeko behind it. Dude, so what's the swim? I gotta have a swim bait, and what? It's the jackhammer. It, it, uh, it's the jackhammer. It's Brett Height's bait that he brought right. over from. I, I heard him talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's good. I'm not kidding you. It's good. And then you throw it's... that Yamamoto Zeko swim bait behind it. It makes it juke. You know, sometimes it jukes like an it old hunts. balsa B3, man. You know, you it, it, it's pretty cool, dude. 
I've uh, I've definitely gotten away from the chatterbait. I won a bunch of money on it back when, and uh, I just I don't have any good ones that I'm confident with. I'm getting the, I'm getting the stink some... eye from the producer. We're running over, but I got a couple more oh, questions oh. for you. A couple more questions. You got the uh, the last swing of the tour. You're on summer vacation right now, okay? Um, okay. And then you're I mean you're right at the bubble. We're you're... headed to Disney next week. Yeah, are you nice? Yes. You know those ponds there are amazing, right? I've I've done that before, yeah. Oh. But I hear the red snapper biting too. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> you have to call. That's two hours away. I think Julie will get mad if I, you guys head to the it's, pond. That's a lot closer. <laughs> she might. She's watching. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's my question. You're at the bubble right now. I think you're sitting. Uh, do you know where you're sitting in points? Because I, I am 50, 51, I think. Fifty one. So. You're real close. Um, you, 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 need, you need some good derbies, okay? You're yeah. you're going to the northern swing. I probably need two, yeah. Yeah, so. you need two good ones. I mean, that's that's the fact that's of right. the matter. Um, how are you feeling about this? You, you got what? I, St. Lawrence, Champlain, St. Clair, right? I've 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 had a third on on uh, St. Lawrence. I've had a third on Champlain. I haven't done all that well at at uh, St. Clair, but. Uh, but yeah, I've had the opportunities to do really well. I mean, even possibly win on both of those. So, uh, yep. you know, the, I'll have opportunities. The fish are there. There's lots of fish. You can't get shut out. I mean, the place I finished third, I was, there were two guys went to the lake the first time we went that finished first and second. I had the heaviest weight in the river the first time we went. But then the second time we went, I never even got to fish that place. Somebody else made the top 10 where I made the, where I'd finished third before. Oh. So, you know, every time we go, you've got to find something new because, you know, everybody watches the shows and yeah. they know, they you know, know where you're practice, at. Practice may go the same, but then if you have one guy or two guys show up, you know, during the tournament fishing the same stuff, I mean, it's the tournaments don't go the, the, the they don't go as well the second time around. Yeah. Practice may be the same, but the <laughs> tournaments almost yeah. never. It, Never go the same. It's always something different. You got to keep up the momentum. I know you're going to do this. You, you are going right. to do this because I know but, that there's a Bassmaster Classic you know, victory I in the future. I love Champlain, too. I just, I'm just i so excited about Champlain and St. Lawrence. You're going to knock it out. Hey, we're out of time, but before we go, give me a sentence that describes Steve Kennedy. A uh, sentence? <laughs> sure, a word. I mean, a word, I'm, a sentence, a phrase. I don't know how to tell you. I, you know, I'm a numbers guy, an engineer, and... Love what I do. That's about, I love to fish. You so. nailed it right there. <laughs> Boom, you nailed it right there. Steve, thank you so much for coming on the show and hanging out with us knuckleheads, dude. <laughs> okay. we, we had a good you time. You said it, not me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope. did you have fun or not? Did, did you have a good time? <laughs> I did. I did. I yeah. enjoyed this. This so. is way better than you thought it was going to be. I get to do Mike's show tomorrow, <laughs> which will be more more fishing. No game shows, I hope. Yeah. Well, oh, you're doing Bass University tomorrow, right? Bass University, right. Excellent. So, uh, yes. Very informative. We'll be watching, too, and we'll be heckling you on the chat board. I promise. <laughs> I promise we will. Man, but... I'm sweating. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Old Pete Glusick, he'll be sweating, too, so don't worry. It's, there it'll, you go. It'll all be happening. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks again, Steve. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We'd love to have you on again. Win, lose, or draw. You're always welcome on this show, man. Hopefully we can win another one. I need one more good one for sure. <laughs> That's it, man. Safe travels it's and coming. best of luck on the rest of the tour. Thank you so much. That was Steve Appreciate Kennedy. It. Bye, guys. Later. Take care. <laughs> Steve Kennedy, Bassmaster, Elite Series Superstar, right here on Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm Pat Rumick, Ryan Whitaker. Put the power poles down. Don't go nowhere. When we get back, Bradley Roy coming at you live. See you in a minute. I'm John DeMay with M Jigs. Today, I'd like to share with you a little bit about a couple products that we have in our lineup that we're really excited about. The first product I'd like to talk to you about today is the Joe Football Head Jig. Right out of the package, you'll notice that our football head jig is different than most on the market. What makes our jigs different is the quality of components. Let's start with the hook. 
These hooks are custom made for us in Japan. 90 degree bend, black nickel hooks, razor sharp, JDM quality. All of our Joe football head jigs have living rubber skirts. They're hand tied with copper wire to ensure that they stay affixed and it also helps them to flare while they're in the water. We powder paint and heat cure each jig to ensure that the paint stays on your jig even when you're fishing rock. Another feature that separates our jig from other jigs on the market is the screw lock keeper. The screw lock keeper does a couple things for you. Not only does it keep your bait affixed, it'll save you money on soft plastics that pull off of standard barb keepers. The second product I'd like to talk to you about is our hybrid flip and swim jig. We also have a custom hook in our flip and swim jig. It's a 4 aught 30 degree bend black nickel hook. It has the same durable paint, the same great keeper, and a hand tied silicone skirt to complete it. So if you're looking for a premium product that's going to give you an edge over your competition, look us up at demjigs.com. Stanks Bait Company has been hand pouring and injecting soft plastic baits since 2009. Each bait is hand poured with you in mind, and each bait is injected with fish catching juice. They've got over 20 baits to choose from, and Stanks Bait gives you unparalleled custom colors, and they'll match the hatch of your local lake forage. Plus, they feature soft plastic custom airbrushing, and now they offer their services to you and your soft baits. So pretty you'll want to frame it. But don't, because the fish aren't going to see it on your wall. And they're not going to smell it till you get it in the water. You can find them online at stanksbaitco.com or at Tackle Warehouse, Fisherman's Central, Sportsman's Direct, and DNR Sports. Stanks Baits. Get them. The swim jig technique is one of the most successful ways to put fish in the boat. Time in and time out, Bravani bait swim jigs are just the right tool for the job. Beaming with quality, the Bravani swim jigs come in a myriad of colors, feature the best premium hooks and solid trailer keepers to give you, the serious bass angler, the confidence you need to accomplish your goal of putting more fish in the boat. So go to BravaniBaits.com and start climbing the ladder to swim jig success. Rageous Outdoors is quickly becoming the industry leader in tournament fishing apparel. There's no better way to represent your sponsors than with a Rageous jersey. At Rageous, you can get a short sleeve, long sleeve, sweatpants, the best prices in the industry. Rageous also offers club and team discounts, special high school and college prices. Our website is easy to navigate, and Rageous' staff will make the process quick and easy for you. Rageous Outdoors, offering high-quality tournament apparel for the weekend angle. Outfit yourself from head to toe. Check out Rageous online at www.rageous.com. Welcome back. This is Straight Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. Uh, this is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker, who just got back Hello. from the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> he made it just in the nick of time. I was getting some water. Uh, pull the power pulls up. Okay, because we're going to go for a little ride right now with Bassmaster Elite Series Touring Pro. Let's give it up for Bradley Roy. Right here. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Woo! That's how we do it. What's up, Brad? Man, not much. I'm just... Uh... Sitting, on, sitting here waiting on you guys to call me. I'm uh, sorry. Steve Kennedy <laughs> would not shut up. He just kept talking. He kept, he kept going. He kept yeah. going. I don't know when what was wrong. Meant to say, it was really me. I, it's my fault, not Steve. Steve. No problem at all, man. Yeah, I, I, I love Steve Kennedy, man. It's uh, I didn't get to tell him congratulations to Dardanelle, but he did a, he did a great job there. It, it's, dude, we're glad you're here. Uh, this is your first time on this crazy show. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, you find, call, it's great to be here. I mean... Uh, I guess, is this a fairly new show for you guys, or have you been doing this a while? Like, we've been doing it for about a year now, and, okay, cool. and you knew me from the radio days way, way right. back then. Right, you know, I, I thought that's what you were still doing, so this is neat, uh, definitely a, a different twist. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's live. We're, we're actually television stars now, Bradley. Well, that's awesome. That's what you want to be, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> he just wanted people was, to see his hair. Yeah, I just wanted. Yeah, just that's ex- that's exactly it. But what, dude? Welcome to the show. You're having a pretty good season, dude. I, I'm 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 glad to see that. You know, you're doing all right. Yeah, you know, last year I made my first classic, and uh, to be having a pretty solid season to back that up, uh, I, I can't complain about that. You know, we've still got three more events left in the year, and they're going to be totally different events than what we've done so far. You know, we're going up north for the next three, so sure. uh, definitely going to be a little different than the first part of it, but definitely happy with the start to my season. Yeah, you got to be stoked for Champlain, right? Yeah, I, the, the next three tournaments we've got are, you know, Lake Champlain, St. Lawrence River, and St. Clair up north, and I mean, all those places are just full of fish, full of big smallmouth, and uh, definitely going to be a lot of fish caught and a lot of fun, so you always get excited when you get to go to places like that. It's crazy because, I mean, really, they are world-class fisheries. There's no doubt about it. No, no doubt about it. And you you being at this game for, for a few years now, like what, what, this is like your seventh year, right? Or sixth year? What is it? Six? That seventh, maybe going on eight. I'm not okay. sure. <laughs> I, I knew, I knew it'd been a bit. Um, but it's like, it's gotta be overwhelming for you, man, as a, as a young bass angler, like, and I'm going back, like when you fir- your first, your rookie season, it's like, man, you gotta just be jacked up. Cause it's like every lake you're going to are lakes that you uh, dreamed about as a kid. You know? Yeah, it really is, and it's awesome to be able to go to places like that, but you know going into it, you know, if it's easy for you to catch 17, 18, 20 pounds, <laughs> of there, it's easy for everybody to catch it. So it's kind of a different mindset, but they're they're definitely slugfest-type tournaments, and it's it's not a tournament where you're trying to get a bite, kind of like we were doing at Dardanelle. It's yeah. a tournament where you're trying to catch those bigger ones. Get the right bites. Sure. Right. That separates the, uh, the the men from the boys on the elite. Exactly. No, no doubt about it. And how, how do you feel is the best way of going about that, too? Because, I mean, it's tough. I mean, we, we fish some fisheries up in Wisconsin like that, too, where you get a million bites a day. And uh, it, just, it just seems like it seems like the guys that win are like, I got six bites today, you know? And the other guys yeah. are getting 100. It's a hard – that's the million-dollar question, you know? And to me, for me, when I go up north, it usually ends up being one or two things. There's either – a an area that's producing better quality fish you know maybe you're catching four pounders versus three and a half or three and a half versus threes whatever it may be but a lot of times it comes down to just a little bait change you know maybe a different color on your drop shot or, or a different color tube or something that just lets you catch a size bigger fish and at the end of the day you know it ends up you have 18 and, the, and all the rest of the guys have 17 or 16 or whatever it may be so i either look for it's an area whether there's an area on that body of water that's producing better quality fish for some reason, or if if there's just a little small bait change that I can make uh, inside those smaller areas. So you're always experimenting when you start getting bit, changing colors, and just seeing what happens then, right? Yeah, because, I mean, and I hate to say this, you know, go up north and not be able to get a bite, but it's usually <laughs> not an issue to go catch, you know, you're not 12, 13 pounds and never gets you anywhere, you know, but, but that's kind of fairly easy to catch. You've got to be able to figure out how to catch those uh, you know, three and four pound fish. But the, the thing up north is you don't catch a lot of those big ones. When we fish down south, we may not be getting that many bites, but we have the chance to kev- catch a six, seven, eight pounder. Mm-hmm. Up north, a four or five pounder is a really big one. So you've got to got to play. you got to have all your fish be in that three to four pound range, you know, and, and not ever sure, having right. those small ones. So you've got to figure out what triggers those. Yeah, I mean, then, like you said it, that's the million dollar question. How do you do that? Exactly. I'm gonna. That'll be the tough. The I tough mean, question. but that. But that's what makes you guys good because you know whether it's you or, or or somebody else in that in that dynamic field, one of you guys is always figuring something out, just a little bit different. It could be the same. You know, you guys all could be on the jerk bait bite. Okay, you could be all on. Uh, you know, throwing the chatter chicken. You could be. You know, like that moon eye jig at the like you guys did it at cherokee in the beginning it's there's just little subtleties that eat that somebody figures out it separates the men from the boys like we said earlier it's crazy dude yeah it is and it's frustrating a lot of times for me because you know i i fish a tournament maybe i finish in the 30s or 40s or have kind of a mediocre mediocre tournament and then i watch the show or I watch Bassmaster Live, and I see how those guys catch them. And You're like, son of a I, gun. I should have yeah, done that. Yeah, it's like, man, you know, I fished that. No, it's either two things. It's either I fished through that area in practice and didn't <laughs> throw on the right bait, or I was just there was something small that I just wasn't doing with my equipment or my presentation that was, you know, it's like, you know, I think Van Dam was at, we were at Ross Barnett, and that place was muddy, 
He was catching fish on a jerk bait in lily pads in muddy water. It's crazy. <laughs> and that's what he figured out better than I did, which is the proven point that at, at this time he's he's better at what he was doing there was he he knew they were so keyed in on shad it didn't matter how muddy it was he just wanted to throw something imitating shad right. and it's it's crazy that these guys pick up on that stuff right. that little stuff so quick and you were kicking yourself in the ass because you love that jerk bait you- right oh exactly you know and and i had a great tournament there i mean i finished 14th so I, i'm not complaining about my finish but it was just when i when i watched that show i'm like you got to be kidding because i was trying to figure <laughs> out how to get bid in the pads and i couldn't get bid in them you just blame and that just blame that bait, you know Blame that on the magazines and oh. all the TV shows, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, they always say you gotta have clear water to throw a jerk bait. Old and Uncle not Kevy. always. You know, that's crazy. That's old Uncle Kevy. He yeah. always comes up with something. Out thinking he people. He, he does. Speaking of that jerk bait, man, I you know it's something that and and Steve Kennedy just said the same thing, um, b- before you came on. He's like, you know, throwing that jerk bait, something I need to do more of. And and for, it's a lot of work to me to throw that jerk bait. I watch you throwing it. I watch Van Dam throwing it. it. It's like, man, it's a lot of work, ain't it? Need a good shoulder. It, it is, and it's something you kind of you've got to commit to. And then I think a lot of times we get caught up jerk bait fishing, thinking, oh, you just put a shad colored one on, you throw it, and if they're not hitting that, they're not hitting jerk bait. But I think it's it gets kind of detailed. You know, whether there's it's a depth or line size or subtleties in color of I think there's a lot to, more to jerkbait fishing, and I think the Elite Series has proved that because more catching fish into jerk into May and June on jerkbaits. Right. Yeah, it's not just not, for breakfast. I'm not talking about up north. I'm talking about down south places. We shouldn't be catching them on a jerkbait. So I think it's opened the world's eyes to what a jerkbait can do. Again, yeah, it's not just cold water. I mean, no, it's, it's and, and that's the mindset that it's not just clear water. It's not just cold water. The jerkbait works all the time. That's when right. they're keying in on that type of forage. Correct. Uh, I think, and I've, I've gotten to where, honestly, I, you, you said it, I love to throw a jerkbait, and I grew up throwing a jerkbait, Lake Cumberland, clear water, like we were talking about, but I've gotten to where I keep one on my deck now all the time and throw it in, in a lot of different situations because I've had my butt kicked so much by not throwing it uh, later on in the year. We had a guy on the show not too long ago. I won't uh, drop any names. Mike McClelland, who um, <laughs> said that uh, a, a lot of times <laughs> that he throws the jerk bait on the mono. Do you do that too? Are you using mono? Well, I have. Uh, for instance, I did it at Okeechobee this year. Whenever I was fishing it over top of grass, and I, I wasn't wanting the jerk bait to get down as deep, and you know, working it more subsurface, you know, foot underneath the water. So, I, so I was throwing it on big mono so it wouldn't get down there any deeper. Uh, but most times, I mean, 90% of the time, I'm throwing it floor carbon. What's the ideal setup? Give, give me like a rod and reel combo setup. You know, for... I I'm, I build my own rods. I build MHX rods. And I like throwing my jerkbait on an MB842, which that's a fast tip. Uh, I like to be fast or extra fast tip on a jerkbait because that's going to allow you to, you know, actually twitch the bait, actually put the action into the bait. And you want a medium action, a medium to a medium heavy action. Okay. Uh, so you can still work that bait. But you can, when a fish gets a hold of it, you're not pulling the treble hooks out of it. Gotcha. So an MB8, 842 is what I use MHX rod. You know, you want a high speed reel because you're not reeling the bait, you're working the bait with your rod. So I, I'm going to do like a seven to one gear ratio reel and 12 pound fluorocarbon is what I usually throw for a standard gotcha. uh, clip fluorocarbon. And, and that's th- just, for me, that's a good general, you know, way to start. Now, like when we were fishing Cherokee this, this winter and I was throwing it some down there. I was throwing a deep, a little bit deeper one. I was throwing it on eight and ten pound test, trying to get it down there, you know, to you know that ten to twelve foot range with a little deeper diving bill and water's clean, sure, cold, all that good stuff. But for most scenarios, twelve pound fluorocarbon be 12, good. Twelve pound floor. and you're using that eight forty two as a seven foot, so it's a seven. Yeah, foot. It, it's a seven foot. You know, I'm I'm not a tall guy, but I'm I'm like a I'm six foot or so, so I can I can jerk bait with a seven foot rod and not hit the water. Now some guys that may be shorter. They need a six nine, and that's that's perfectly fine for a jerkbait, and actually probably will put more action into the rod. And then some guys that are taller may be able to use it a seven two or a seven three. It's all about your height and your comfort level. With you don't want to be able to hit the water every time. You know you want to be able to sure. work the bait and not have to fool with that. Sure, a- absolutely, absolutely. Hey, um, it's uh, bass fishing's all about decisions. We we hear it all the time. I know it's a cliche, but but it is. It it really comes down to decisions. What What's the best decision you've ever made in your career, Bradley, as far as a professional bass fishing? What's the best decision you ever made? 
Man, that's that's hard to say. Um, <laughs> that that's a tough. one. It could you be know, career wise. It could be on the water. I mean, what? Think think about it. Think about that for a minute. You know, I, I don't know that I could give you a real good answer on that. But one thing I did as a fisherman a, f- a few years ago, I, I kind of just started doing my own thing. Now, when I say that, I'm not going off the wall. And I'm not trying to catch them. You know, out in the middle of the lake doing stupid. I'm I'm, I'm not doing that, but. I kind of made it a point to quit listening to Doc talk. You know, we get in trouble as fishermen because sure. I can tell you to come to my home lake and I'll tell you how they should be biting at that, at that right. lake. And you're, oh, That's I'll Bradley told me to be. throw a June bug worm, you know, or whatever <laughs> it may be. And so you're going to get locked into that mindset and we get ourselves in trouble because if you had brought your own strengths and your, what you're confident in to my home lake, you might have figured them out better that day than I would have. So what I kind of learned, I made a decision about two or three years ago, and it, I think it made a difference in my fishing ability just to not listen to Doc Talk. Now, I'm going to pick up, like we were at Cherokee, for instance, the Demicky rig. Yeah. That's something that's situational that we all needed to know. So, yes, I was going to throw the Demicky rig. But for more often than not, what I've done is kind of got away from if I want to talk to a local about a lake or something like that, I don't want to hear what he's throwing. I don't really hear. I just want to know what they eat kind of general areas that maybe don't hold fish ever and then give me some general areas that do hold fish and let me figure it out myself and i think that's been a great decision for me awesome. as a fisherman you're you're beating to you're marching to the sound of your own drum <laughs> yeah that's right okay and i think it helps because you know instincts is what if you're a good fisherman you're a good fisherman for a reason it's partly because you have instincts you know that kind of we make this game way too hard, man. These fish aren't, they're not that smart. We, we like to give them too much credit. You know, kind of like the, we don't think they could bite a jerk bait in muddy water. Of course they can. It's they can minnow. find anything in muddy water. So we, we make it too hard. Hey, you, you had a cool deal uh, this last weekend. You, you had a, uh, a charity event that you were hosting. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, you know, it's a company, uh, an organization called USA Cares. Uh, they're a little different with um, – how they assist military families. They work with post 9 11 uh, military servicemen and women and their families. And they actually take care of basic quality of life needs. You know, if these military men or women get out of the military and they're, you know, having trouble finding a job, and in between the time they find a job and whatever, there's car bills and light bills and house bills, you know, all that good stuff to be paid. So that's where USA Cares comes in and they'll, they'll bridge the gap a little bit. But anyway, we had a, uh, a great tournament. I do two tournaments a year. The first one was on Harrington Lake, which is my home lake. We had, I think, 70 boats turn out for it. It's a you know, We pay back quite a bit of money. We guarantee $2,500 first place, but we also you know, keep some money for USA Carriers, so it works out great. Um, lots of fish weighed in. I think there's 56 limits out of 70 weighed in, so nice. it was great. Wow. I, I bumped the fish. I actually, I enjoy doing that. <laughs> I, fish, I actually bumped, you know, check measured the fish. You were trip welding for the day. Do you wear yeah, gloves? Yeah. Are you wearing but gloves? It's a great deal because I, I like to, uh, you know, take what I love, which is fishing, and then be able to give back at the same time. You know, so we kind of kind of bridge that gap between fishing and, and USA Cares. And we've got another tournament on Lake Cumberland, uh, September 30th, uh, this this fall. So if anybody watching from Kentucky wants to come fish that, it, we would love to have you there. So uh, I think we're guaranteeing three thousand dollars for that one. So it'll be a, a great tournament, a great a great event to be at. Where's that awesome. one, Bradley? Where's when is L- it? Lake Cumberland. Uh, in Kentucky. And what date? September 30th, I believe. If I'm not misquoting it, but I believe it's September 30th. Awesome, awesome. That's a that's a good deal. I mean, absolutely a good deal. Hey, um, you know, you kind of you touched on it there a little bit. We overcomplicate things. Um, as far as bass fishermen, also, it seems like, and I don't know how to put this, but being a professional bass fisherman can almost be over glorified can it it's it's really hard work yeah it is and i kind of thought i was kind of one of those people when i first got into this you know i was all excited about figuring out everything when i was young and you know you kind of there's a lot of people out there that think kevin van damme's got secret baits that nobody else has right and yet he might get baits quicker than you he might get the prototypes or whatever but there's no secrets to it most of the time it just comes down to hard work and these guys are some of the hardest working people that I know, the guys that fish the Elite Series. And I've had to teach myself that, too, how to, I mean, it's sun up to sundown, trying to find these fish and figure out what they're going to bite. So 
it's not as glorious, which I'm sure there's work in every professional you know, sport. Absolutely but, there is, yeah. You know, you've got to – to be a basketball player, you got to train and be in the gym, and I, and I get all that. And fishing's a little different in the sense that we – time on the water for us is where we, you know, can really make, make up the difference. And pre-scouting bodies of water, doing research, looking at – you know, the Internet's a great tool. So you're exactly right, though. It's It may be a little over-glorified, and people don't realize exactly uh, – what we do and they think we're just out there all you know making millions of dollars which is <laughs> definitely not the case you know we're out here you know grinding and out trying to survive and trying to um you know just catch bass and it's a lot of work hey you you kind of touched on it but i, I want to go back to to when you started you're still a young guy but when you started um your your career with the bass masters wait were you 19 20 years old I was 19 years 19. old. The first, the first yes, yeah, of the elite series event I actually fished. I was 19. Right, and you did uh, well. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. What the question is now? Being a young guy, there, there's a lot more young guys coming up now too. And uh, how how do the other guys, the veterans, look at you? Are are they eager to help you, or are they kind of feeling threatened about about these young guys trying to steal their thunder? You know, I've I've always had a warm welcome from the majority of the elite series since I've been on, you know, at first I think they were a little nervous about me being so young and, and without getting into something else, I think the younger generation of fishermen are a little different than the older generation. Fishing's always been a gentleman sport and, you know, usually people aren't very aggressive and all this good stuff. And, and the younger generation coming in is very, very aggressive and that's helping them in some ways. And it's, it's not helping them in other ways. And I think once I kind of got over the hump where I proved to the majority of the guys out there, you know, the Tommy Biffles of the world, <laughs> that I wasn't out here to, you know, I wasn't out here just, uh, I wasn't going to fish your spot unless I, if I, unless I had fished there first. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like, sure. Um, I was trying to do it. things the right way. And I think once I figured that out, I've had, I've had a great, you know, uh, warm welcome from everybody. And it's, they've been willing to help me. And, uh, of course, I roomed with Mark Menendez. And he's he's been doing it, I guess, right at 20 years. And so we help each other out. And he's helped me a lot, too, with um, learning, you know, the, the ways of the Elite Series and, and professional gotcha. bass fishing, things like that. He's so that's been awesome a big dude. help. Mark's awesome. Did you have maybe yeah. one, one guy that was really helping you in the beginning or, or anyone you traveled with back then? Yeah, actually, I mean, it was Mark. I mean, Mark and Greg Vinson both. Uh, I traveled with both of them to start with. You know, and that was – that was the thing. I was 19, man. I, I hadn't hardly, I mean, yeah. I'd been out of the state. Don't get me wrong. You'll family vacation, stuff like that. But our very first tournament was in California. And I, that's wow. a 41 hour drive from my house here in Kentucky. So <laughs> wow. I, I jumped, you jumped in the truck and piled in right behind Mark and we caravaned all the way to California. And of course that's been, I guess, seven or eight years ago. Now it's 2010. So yeah. seven years ago. And he's, he's helped me along that way. And I kind of poke fun at him that he babysit me the first few <laughs> years you know, when I was young, and, and now I babysit him now that he's getting old. So I, he's probably not watching this, but I'm going to make fun of him. Comes so around, goes <laughs> around. Probably a lot of stops on the way to let Barkley pee in yeah. the yard, too. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, you're you're just getting started, 19 years old. It's like it's like the movie um, – uh, vacation with Chevy Chase. Do you, do you remember that? The first one? Yeah. With che- you know, yeah. like he's getting ready to hop in the pool with Christy Brinkley and he's like, this is crazy. This is nuts. This is crazy. This is not. <laughs> I'm in know? deep. Yeah, that's, that's what you got to be deep. thinking. You, you got to be yeah. thinking it right there. Hey, yeah, you've gone through sponsor changes in your in your brief, uh, your brief uh, history here as a professional bass angler. And um, and you got a pretty good group of them right now. I, I see you're doing pretty good. We're happy for you there. Um, but my question to you is like, if you could cherry pick a sponsor, one that you don't already have, like if it was it was something that you you wanted this as a sponsor, who would you pick? What company? What either in the fishing industry or not in the fishing industry? Who, who would be your sponsor? Man, of course you 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 love asking loaded questions, don't you? That, I that's did, a, that's <laughs> what we. It's a talk show. It's a bad that's talk. a loaded question. It's a bad you know, talk show. Um, some, some folks that have always been really good to me, you know, they've, they've sent me baits when I needed them and actually sent me some before the classic. I don't have any affiliation with them. They're not any of my jerseys. They don't send, you know, really pay me. They don't pay me any money at all. They don't really send me that many baits. It was just baits that I've always worked with and people have been nice to me. And if I needed them, I could get them. And that's Strike King. Uh, I use a lot of their crank baits, some of their jerk baits, stuff like they make good product. Um, and they seem like really good people. And I like, of course, I may get into that. I may have get into that situation and not like it. I don't know. I'm just 
that was the first one that popped in my mind. Okay, but gotcha. They, they seem like they work. Of course, Kevin is a big player and all that, but they seem like they listen to their pros. They, and I they think sure that's do. Something that looked in uh, in the bass fishing world is I mean guys like Kevin and I mean Mark Menendez and just that was the ones off the top of my head. They have a lot of information that can help people that are producing baits, and I, yeah. I feel like Strike King realizes that. Um, I'm not saying that I'm you know that's something I'm going out seeking after, but uh, I feel like that would be a good company to work with. I yeah, guess I thought you were, I thought you were going to say Mountain Dew. Mount Man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, I could do Mountain Dew. I could do, you know, uh, Gerald Swindoll, I think, does the Diet Mountain Dew, and he's, he, he carry, I noticed he carries the Diet Mountain Dew around with him at every weigh in. He so has to. Those will save your bass. It's in his too. contract. It's in, yeah, it's in I, his, I think that must be in his contract. In, but yeah, Strike, Maybe I, strike King's a good Let's fit. do Coca Cola. We'll strike, do that. Well, why not? Okay. I mean, to buy the world a Coke. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Strike King would be a good fit for you. They got everything. And they got good guys. You said it right. I mean, Mark Copley over there. Awesome. Yeah. Dude. Awesome. Talking about Mark's great. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, all, all those dudes over there. Um, here's the deal. All right. You're on summer vacation right now. This is your summer break. Okay. Correct. So, you, you know, you're, you're, cat, you're, you're hanging out with your girlfriend. I'm sure you're doing some bass fishing. I'm sure you're, you're doing, uh, Pro bass fishing stuff. Uh, you're you're just doing regular old Bradley Roy stuff. But let's say that you could pick one elite series competitor to hang out with for a week of your summer vacation and learn from. Who would it be? Who would this young Bradley Roy pick to be Man. your mentor for the week? That's that's a tough one. Uh, We're all about the tough ones here. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. You know, if it if it wasn't summertime, I got one right off the bat that if it wasn't summertime and before he he retires one day, I'd like to get Shaw Grigsby to teach me everything he knows about catching a bed off the bat. Oh yeah. Right. Old Fish Flanders. off the bed. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so I could spend some time on the boat with him. Uh, you know, I've I've always thought Van Dam, of course that's a cliche answer, but Van Dam goes through the process of finding, you know, the process we were talking about earlier about finding fish and finding what the bigger ones eat. And he does it so fast. I'd love to fish some buddy tournaments or something with him, you That'd know, just awesome, to right? see, just to see how quick he does it, you know, and uh, and I'm sure there's stuff I could pick up from him to still learn. I mean, he's been doing this a long time, absolutely, and obviously very very good at it. So, I mean, and, and if you're talking about summertime fishing, he's there's none better as far as a ledge fisherman and offshore fisherman goes. Mm -hmm. uh but the other one that comes to mind or one more okay that it's always kind of he's he's always been a really cool dude and he uh i love to talk to him and spend time with him at the weigh-ins and things but i think he knows way more about post-spawn fishing than i think he's probably the best post-spawn fisherman we've ever seen and that's mark davis wow uh mark davis is just whenever those bass leave the spawn and they go from you know when they're going from point a to point b they're trying to get to their summer sun that that transition zone where we all get lost a lot of times mark understands that better than anybody mark davis and during that time of the year i'd love you know early or late may beginning of june i'd love to spend some time with the boat with him because i think he understands it really really well nice it, those were phenomenal answers and the and another great part about Covered it the whole year yeah, yeah is they're all strike king guys too so yep. it's no, like it's like a big I, dream come I, true. You get your <laughs> dream sponsors, and you got your dream anglers. They're all striking. You're a big happy family. Yeah. Welcome to the family. Ships, you might be able to make that. Welcome a to the family, B Roy. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, right there. That's awesome. That, that is awesome, dude. Um, <laughs> hey, oh, do we got some some questions here on uh, Facebook Live for Bradley? What's going on, JP? What, what we got, got some. You, you covered some. Is it correct? You are the youngest angler ever on the elites. I was, yes. You were. Still to this youngest angler to qualify. 19, I think, is the what they settled on. I was actually 18 when I qualified, but by the time I fished my first one, I was 19. So. I mean, did you drop out, drop out of school? I, I graduated high school a semester early and started fishing the Opens that spring of my senior year of high school and qualified my first year. That's wow. how you do it. That's called wow. the Gary Klein syndrome yeah, right that's, there. Yeah. That's hey, how you. Yeah. That's how you do it. That I is awesome. butter in a van. Right? We got we got our buddy Chip watching. He wants to know Chip Ahoy, white or black frog. Oh my God! Do we even <laughs> have to do this? I, or... I'm a I'm a black frog guy. Thank you. I, Thank you. I've 
if if they're like the shatter spawning or something crazy going on, I'll throw a white one. But man, I really like that black frog a lot better. Oh, they'll still eat black. It's a black frog. I go with the bluegill. <laughs> Here's official announcement: We are now banning the white frog black Why? frog question. You're the it's only done. one that doesn't it's like done. it. Nobody. Who cares? No, Nobody we're cares. still doing it. All right, no, let's do it. Ivan wants to know what is your all-time favorite lure. Oh shoot, man! Yeah, when I started my career, I would have said the jerk bait, but. I've had to become a little more versatile than that, and uh, I mean, if that's a hard one. I mean, I really love throwing jerk bait, but I don't know that I can answer that question because whatever they're biting on, how about that? <laughs> that's the money maker. All right, the same guy wants to know what's your favorite condition to fish. Ooh, man, I, I like it whenever. This is weird to say, but I actually like it when a lake's coming up and uh, you know lakes have got a lot of rain or something and they're flooded. Sure. You know, that spends a lot of people out, but I love having all that access to new cover. It just, it makes the unknown kind it's of. It's an adventure. Part. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, it's an adventure. And I, I we've had some of those events the past few years, and I, I love it. I, every time somebody says the lake's flooded, I'm like, let's go. That's cool. And some guys hate it, but I, I really enjoy it. What you're saying is you like to flip mailboxes. That's yeah. You're dang right. Yeah, And, and dumpsters and, you know, public restrooms and swing all that sets. good stuff. Under Grills. The yeah, swing yeah. sets. You, you got it. Hey, um, do you know who Bo Dowden is? Bo Dowden. Yeah, nineteen. What is it? Yeah, right? eighty. <laughs> classic I winner. Think so remind, re- refresh my memory a little bit, but I'm pretty sure I know who you're talking I think, about. I think he, won, it, he won the classic in nineteen eighty. The Bassmaster oh, on the uh, St. Lawrence yeah. uh, River, yep. in uh, in nineteen eighty. Bo Dowden. That Bo Dowden is my first professional bass fishing tournament memory. Okay, now, of course, before that, I, I loved watching Bill Dance and Roland and Jimmy and, and all those guys. But the first real thing that sticks in my brain was Bo Dowden winning that Bassmaster Classic, okay? What's your first bass fishing tournament memory? You know, I'm, I'm like, you know what I'm saying, right? You know what I'm getting at? Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely, I know what you're saying. Um, of course, y'all. As far as a bass fishing tournament, I, I fished with my dad growing up, but my first one where I was actually around pros and kind of what you're talking about, something similar, uh, was at the 2004 Bassmaster Classic. I actually qualified for the Junior World Championship awesome. that through the through the Bassmaster thing, and we got to take we were taken out by by the Classic anglers. They were our boat captains. Nice. And and I I got drawn out with Chad Grigsby or I meant not Chad Grigsby I'm sorry Chad Brower Chad Brower and, okay uh, which he doesn't fish you know a lot of professional stuff anymore but I got to be around Denny a lot you know his dad Denny and of course they're both great guys we had a great week but that was my first time in really having a great memory of and seeing the classic is the first time I'd ever been to a classic and that was also the point in my career where I said this is what I want to do for a living. So that was my – that's a really fond memory for me, getting her to be around Denny, getting her to be around Chad, of course, a lot of the other guys too. But that was the first time in my career I remember – or my life that I remember thinking this is what I want to do for a career. That's a that's a good one. Heck, that a, yeah. That was the most exciting ending to a classic ever, in my opinion, too, yeah. with Takahiro. Yeah, it was. I mean – He knew it. He knew it. What, yes. He knew it. it. The crunk box. That's uh, – but, yeah, it was definitely a cool, cool term. And I, and I miss – not to change the subject, but I kind of miss the summertime classics a little bit. Too, I know they were dude. tougher and they're hard. They were hard to kind of find places you could go and not dive heat and all that good stuff. Yeah. But they were tougher, but they created more drama, I think, uh, sometimes. And I, I kind of miss the summertime classic every now and then. And, yeah, and, they used to actually come up by us occasionally too. Yeah, once. Yeah, yeah that's one right. Time. Yep. And uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, but now you got Bass Fest. So that's, G- that's right. that, you know, which is an awesome event. It's that's an awesome. I, I love it. Actually, the past two years I've done really well. In it, I so know. I, 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 I love it. I don't know what it is about it, but we uh, know. I love it. We know you have, man. What what's your uh, what's your five year plan, Brad? Five year plan. Yep. Well, wouldn't like four four out of five years win the classic? No, okay. Be, <laughs> no, it's it. <laughs> you know, for me, uh, I've just been developing as an angler. Of course, you, you mentioned I started really young. And I probably started too young. I had to learn, um, had to, had to learn a lot of things real quick. I guess my learning curve had to be pushed up. So I, I think I'm developing a lot of things as I go, and I, I believe I've got a handle on some of them. So my goal in the next five years, I want to make the classic every year, which that's a big deal for us. Absolutely. 
and I would like to see myself start pushing into that top 10 in AOI points, you know, maybe competing for angle of the year. I don't know if that, uh, that who knows if that that's possible. Cause every year is a little different. You know, I mean, you may have a good year to finish in the 20 in the points. That's just the way the elite series is. It's gotten competitive, but I want to get to where I can see myself in the top 10 in the AOI points year in and year out. Consistency. 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 And then if you do that long enough, sooner or later, things are going to go your way and you're going to win one of them. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to, you're going to eventually win that classic. You're going to eventually win AOI. And you will eventually be sponsored by Strike King Lures. <laughs> and Mountain Dew. And, It'd be funny if we're having one day. That's the, that's the trifecta. Coca-Cola. Sorry. That's the yeah. five-year plan. Okay, Brad? Uh, okay, I got you. We'll you're, check back in in five years, see if any of this yeah, happens. You're, you're, you're speaking our language. And we hope that you uh, check in with us. Uh, a lot sooner than in five years. Sure, yeah. sure. It's it's been an honor to have you on the show, dude. Um, do you have any any last words for your your fans or your your sponsors before we get out of here? No, man. I just I appreciate all the support I get on. You know, of course I, I stay on Facebook quite a bit and uh, and also Instagram. So if anybody wants to follow along with me, get on there. Find I'm easy to find on there, and I'll reply to messages, answer questions. I love being on there. So definitely appreciate the support. Dude, and, his, and thank you for supporting us. What's his, up, JP? His Instagram is great. Yeah. It's one of the better pro fishermen out there. I appreciate that. And that's our social media Pick guy up. telling yeah, you this. I mean, that's, a, that's huge. I appreciate that. that. That's awesome. Dude, seriously, thanks so much for um for coming on the show. We got we got to keep in better touch, man. I had a good time with you, dude. I think we should do this way more often. Yeah, a- absolutely. And and uh, enjoy the rest of your, your summer vacation. And uh, b- best of luck on the uh, on the northern swing, bro. Thank you so much. And I'll probably I'll run into you at St. Clair. I'll, I'll see you down there. That'd be good. Right, That'd I'll, be awesome. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy you a Mountain Dew. That, that'll work. Coca Cola. Co- uh, Coca Cola. Co- Sorry, Coca Cola. Yeah. Disclaimer. That's my sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> That's my new sponsor. I can't, I can't drink Dew. <laughs> and I'll give you a Series Five crankbait. How's that sound? <laughs> All right, there it is. Hey, Brad. Thanks so much, Thank man. And uh, dude, you're awesome. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Peace out. That was Bradley Roy. Bassmaster Elite Series Angler uh, uh, wrapping up the show uh, right here. It's been another action-packed show gone over again. Uh, And we'll be back here uh, next Wednesday, same bass time, same bass channel. But before we go, I do want to remind you again, if you're viewing in the area, uh, please stop out at Centennial Park in Munster this Saturday. At what time is this, Ryan? 8 a.m. to noon. 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, All proceeds. It's a a kids' fishing derby. All proceeds uh, benefit the Munster buying volunteer firefighters um it's going to be fun we're going to be there having a good time and i hear there's hot dogs and that is sponsored by cabela's and straight cast yeah cabela's and straight cast wow that's pretty cool we're sponsoring stuff yeah we're sponsoring we're big time and everybody don't forget your fishing licenses oh yeah do not forget your fishing. good point good point right there hey um, we'll be there thank you so much to all you uh tuning in tonight uh without you we're nothing thank you to, to all our sponsors um This is a blast, man. I'm not going to kid you. We have a great time here every Wednesday night, and we hope it conveys to you. So we'll catch you here next Wednesday night. And in the meantime, don't forget, we're on the iTunes, uh, past episodes on on StraightCast.net. Uh, and check us out on that uh, book face page and uh, Instagram. JP's putting stuff up there all the time. So uh, we will see you next week. Until then, I bid you peace. Bass Galaxy. Shut up. David Letterman.